As content creators, we're used to using all sorts of different apps for different sections of our workflow, including apps like Final Cut or Premiere Pro to do editing, OBS to do streaming, and then external hardware like SD cards and Zoom recorders to actually record our video and audio. But if you're really looking to streamline and centralize all of those different tools in one place, then Riverside is quickly becoming that solution. As you can do all of your recordings, your live streams, and your editing directly within the one platform. And Riverside has just added a bunch more features to make this even easier. So today I'm going to give you a detailed breakdown of each part of the platform so that you can get the most out of it if you're using it or if you're deciding whether you want to use it. And just before we jump into the tutorial section, this video is in partnership with Riverside and they've been kind enough to offer a special discount. So you can use the code NICK20 to get 20% off your subscription. I've got all the details linked in the description and if you don't already have an account, you can sign up completely for free to give it a go. So let's jump onto the Mac and get started. So here we are in my Riverside studio and just for reference, we're going to go through three key areas today, including recording, streaming, and then editing. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about some really cool bonus features within Riverside. So if you're interested in particular sections, I've left timestamps in the description so you can jump straight to the section that you want. But starting off, we're going to talk about actually recording your content within Riverside. So I've already logged into my studio, as you can see, and up here, there's a record button. And this will take you straight to your studio. So I won't go there just yet because I want to just touch on a couple of other recording options. So first of all, you've got the option to invite people to your recording. And this is particularly useful if you're recording with someone else when you're doing something like a podcast or a remote interview. So literally all you have to do is just copy this link and then send it to your guest. And they can join on their browser without installing any additional software or anything like that. You can invite them via email as well. And you can even invite your audience. So if you're doing a live stream, you can send this link out to your audience and they can participate. And you can also add producers. So it can get as involved as you want it to. If you've got people behind the scenes who are running all of the back end of your stream, you can add them as a producer. So you don't have to worry about that. You can just focus on your stream. And then the other cool thing I wanted to mention was you can schedule out your recording session. So here we've got a schedule session. You can invite people via email and then you can set the exact time zone, date and scheduled time plus give it a session name. So that is really handy. All right, so let's say it's time to record. So let's hit record and we'll enter our actual Riverside studio. And the first thing that's gonna appear is my settings for my camera and my mic. So I want to select just my FaceTime camera Then I'm gonna use my Rodecaster, which is my main mic as my microphone. And then I'm gonna make my speakers, my Bluetooth headset. And we've got a little preview of what our recording is gonna look like. I'm gonna say, I am using headphones. My name is Nick and then I just hit join studio. And there we go. We're in the recording studio. As you can see, there's an invite link ready to go here again as well, if you want to invite someone. But I'll just quickly take you through some of the settings to optimize in Riverside so that you can get the best quality. So first of all, just over here on the right, you've got echo cancellation. So if you're not wearing headphones and you're hearing a bit of echo or feedback from yourself or your guests, you can turn that on. Generally, Riverside does a good job without it, so you probably won't need it. Next, let's go up to the settings option here. Then if I go to recording, we can see we can record video and audio or just audio. So that could be useful if you're just doing audio your podcast, for example. And then down here in video, we've got standard resolution, which is generally recommended depending on your internet connection speed, or you can record up to 4K HD, which is pretty impressive considering we're recording directly into a browser. And that's currently what I've got it set to. You can also do just up to 1080p, which probably might be ideal for this type of video since my FaceTime camera is only HD anyway. But generally, if you want the highest quality settings, go up to 4K as long as your uh, webcam supports that. And then you know you're gonna get the absolute best quality out of Riverside. So let's just close that. Then from here, there's a few other things we can customize. So over here on the right, we've got brand and you can select a theme. So if we just click through these different themes, you can see they're all pretty different. And there's some really nice ones in there. I think Sugar Plum is generally my favorite. I like this purple and blue. You can also adjust the name badge just with this style buttons here. That bulge is in my favorite. You can also adjust the video frame style so you can make it fill the entire screen like that or just make it fit. You can even add a custom logo if you're doing it for a branded recording. You can also add lower thirds with text right here. So let's just say we want to show that this is Nick's studio and we can just adjust the amount of time so we can do five seconds and hit show. This will pop up in the recording. So this entire window is being recorded and this will last for five seconds and then disappear. You can also upload your own media, including videos and audio and then play it while you're recording. So this is a super easy way to just add in extra content to your recording on the fly and you don't have to worry about adding it later in post. Now, if we go to the chat tab, we can see 
see here we've got a live stream chat. So if we were live streaming right now, we could see all of the chat that's coming through from uh, viewers and participants. We've also got a studio chat for people who are operating the system behind the scenes. And then just before we actually start recording, just wanna show you a couple other things. So first of all, we've got share. So this enables you to share your screen. Again, really useful, especially if you're doing teaching type stuff or tutorials that you wanna record or live stream, you can share your screen. And then you've also got this script button here. So you can enter an entire video script in here. And then you can either just read it as you're recording or you can hit the teleprompter button and this will overlay it on top of your video. Then if you hit play, it'll play it back and you can actually read it just like a teleprompter. So that is actually a really cool feature. I've been thinking about getting more into teleprompters recently. So this is a really good way to test that out. I'm just gonna turn that off for now. And let's just say we're ready to record. I'm all happy with my settings. We just mouse over the go live button and then hit start recording. And then it's gonna give me a countdown from five seconds so that we're almost ready to record. And now we can see we've started rolling. Now the last main thing to remember when you're recording your video, especially if you're recording with someone else, is that it will default to recording your video and audio locally, and then it uploads it in the background. Now this means you're gonna get the absolute maximum image quality. However, if your internet isn't that fast, it's definitely gonna make the connection with your guest a bit choppy. So in order to prevent this, just go back to the people tab, hit this little down button. Then here you can see the button that says pause upload. So if I hit pause upload, now it's gonna stop uploading until I've finished actually recording my entire video. So this will allow me to connect and chat with my guest without any interruptions. And then once we've both finished, we can just hit resume upload and we'll upload all of those high quality files directly to Riverside. Once you're done, just come down here, hit stop. And then just here, you can see it's uploading that remainder of the recording. Once that's done, we can head over to the edit section and start editing the video. But before we get to editing, the next thing I wanted to talk about was live streaming from Riverside. And like I said before, us as content creators are used to using a whole bunch of different tools to do a whole bunch of different things, essentially. And when it comes to streaming, either to YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, whatever platform you're streaming to, a lot of people tend to use OBS or Streamlabs. And if you've ever tried to get into streaming, you'll know how complicated it can get pretty quickly. Especially if you're using OBS, there's a lot of different settings to play with. There's a lot of things to set up and customize, and it can get pretty complicated pretty quick. So the main benefit of using Riverside is that it's just super simple. It's basically just entering your recording studio and then hitting live. So let's just say we've set up our studio how we want it. We've invited our guest and we're ready to start our live stream. So all you have to do is go up here to live stream ready. And here we have a few options. So we've got stream to social, and this is where we connect our different social media platforms to Riverside. And if you want to add more, just hit this plus button here. And here you can see all the different platforms that are supported natively, which is pretty much all of the main ones, right? And you can also add your own custom RTM piece. So you would just click on one of these, connect your account, which is super straightforward. It's basically just like connecting any other type of account. I've already connected my Twitch account and my YouTube account. And then you just choose the ones you want to stream to. So I say I just wanted to stream to YouTube, but not Twitch. Just make sure this is checked. I want to stream to both at once. You can turn that on. We can see they're both highlighted. And this is the beauty of Riverside. You can stream to pretty much as many platforms as you like all at once, which again, if you use OBS, you can pretty much only do one at a time. So this streamlines the whole process. And then once we've got all our platforms connected, we can share our audience link. So we just copy this link, like kind of like we saw earlier, share it with our audience, and then they can join the stream directly from their own browser. You can also adjust some settings here. So we can adjust the video quality. Again, depending on your internet connection, if you've got a good upload speed, then go for 1080. If your internet speed isn't quite so good, 720 is a good option. And then once we're ready to go, just go down to go live and then hit that button right there. And once again, we're gonna get a countdown and now we are streaming. Once again, the beauty of Riverside is that it's recording directly to the platform. So even our live stream will be saved and we can edit it later. And you can even get a preview up here of how many people are viewing your live stream. Obviously right now, since I'm just doing a test, it's zero, but this will give you an estimate of viewers when you're actually live. And that's really as easy as it is to live stream. Again, if you go to the chat section, we can go studio chat and we can talk to hosts, producers, and even the guests without the message just having to go over the main public chat. And if you do want it to monitor the public chat, you can just go live stream chat here. And this will pull in all the chat from anyone watching from your Riverside studio. Again, once we're done, we just hit stop. This will end the live stream and then start uploading the recording to Riverside so you can edit it later. Which brings us to the third section, which is editing. And like I said, the biggest benefit of doing your editing within Riverside is that all the files are just in the one place. For example, with my podcast with my friend Sanji, we used to record our podcast in person. And that involved setting up cameras, using SD cards, setting up different mics, recording to different computers. Like there was just so much involved. And then once we'd actually recorded it, we'd have to upload huge video files and audio files, cloud platforms. And then I'd send it to Sanji and he'd edit and then he'd send it back to me and I'd download and upload. It was just a huge 
process. Whereas with Riverside, pretty much all of that grunt work is really just taken out of the equation because you record directly into Riverside. So now Sanji will just invite me to his studio. I'll join from my end, connect up my microphone and my camera. We'll start recording, finish the recording, and then everything will be uploaded straight into the Riverside editor. So it really just streamlines the process just so much. So in order to edit, I'm just gonna go back out of our studio then we go to the nick and sanji podcast studio just here is a recording we did over the weekend so if i click on this recording here we can see we did a half hour recording the other day this is our first episode back in a while so keep an eye out for it and if we want to edit the podcast there's quite a few options to make it as easy as possible first of all there is create with ai and if you click this button this will basically use artificial intelligence to look through your entire podcast and edit the whole thing together so if you're looking for the easiest possible solution this could be really good if you want a bit more manual and fine control you can hit edit and this will take you to the riverside editor right within your browser and i'll just take you through pretty much how i would edit a podcast for a standard episode like this so the first thing i tend to do is use the ai producer so in here we can set the pace of the video i'm going to make it balanced and what this is going to do is that it's going to take out any awkward pauses or silent sections where we weren't speaking just to tighten it up as a base so just hit apply and that's going to take out 19 pauses which equates to 48 seconds so that's done you can also smooth speech so you can remove filler words like ums and ahs any unwanted sounds for this podcast i want it to sound just as natural and as organic as possible so i'm going to leave those in that's where i'm going to start next we're going to choose the layout so up here in the center we can choose the aspect ratio that we want to edit for so if we're wanting to edit videos for shorts reels or tiktoks we can choose the 19 by 16 ratio option if we're going youtube or spotify we've got the 16 9 linkedin x instagram you can do a square or you can just edit the audio only for this one i'm going to upload it to youtube so i'm going to leave it on 16 by 9 and then basically i'm just going to go through and edit the video how i want it i want to take out all the bad parts what you might be used to is going through your timeline and making a whole bunch of manual cuts which can be super time consuming one of the cool things about riverside is the text-based editor so right here We've got the entire transcript. So I can see here, we were just catching up at the start of the podcast. We weren't actually recording. And here is where we actually started talking and recording the podcast where I said, how's your day been? So all I have to do is just highlight the text that I want to delete, scroll down while highlighting to where I say, how's your day been? Like that, and then just hit delete. And as you can see, all of this text has been deleted, but it's actually deleted that section of the video in the timeline as well. So this is a huge time saver. You can even search through your text if you're wanting to find specific sections of the video. And you can literally just scroll through the transcript find the parts you want to delete and just delete now let's just say we do want to have a bit more fine control and make regular cuts so you can still do that in Riverside. So let's just zoom into the timeline just here so we can see a bit more detail. Let's just say I want to cut out this section here. All you have to do is find the part where you want to create a cut and then hit split or use the keyboard shortcut S. So now if I just move up to the other part of the video where I want to make a cut, hit S on the keyboard. That's going to create this cut. And if I want to delete that section, I can just hit delete and boom, it's gone. Now I actually don't want to remove that. So I'm going to control Z undo. But if we zoom back out, we can also see up the top here, we've got different sections of the video and this has been created automatically with AI. One of the cool things is you can just literally drag and move these sections around. So that's another super easy way to edit within the Riverside editor. You could delete these sections if you wanted to. You can pretty much do whatever you like. You can even rename them and modify them, adjust the length. Next, one of the really cool new features of the new Riverside editor is you can add music finally, which is super cool. So we just got in here, hit add music. And then within Riverside, you've already got a whole bunch of music that you can use just right in the browser. So we can just hit play, get a bit of a preview of how it sounds. And if we like it, we can just hit plus. And that's gonna add it directly into our timeline. And we can just move that around just like a normal editor. So we can move it to the start and we can do this for the whole video, add as much music as we want. If we wanna add our own music, that's really easy to do as well. Just hit upload in the music section and just drop that straight into your timeline. We can also add images now in the editor. So let's just say I wanted to add this because we were talking about AI. I can just click and just like that, it's added it straight into our video. And again, we can drag it out, make it as long or as short as we want within the actual timeline. You can also scale it in the window, move it around. So this can be really handy for adding things like logos, any graphics that you might be talking about, informational content, anything you can really think of in image form that you wanna to add to your video, you can do that really easily like that. You can even add custom masks like circles or squares. So it's really customizable, which again, moves Riverside really in the direction of replacing a regular NLE like Final Cut or Premiere Pro. You can also add your own custom branding Pretty much the same as what you could do in the recording studio. So you can add your own logo. If we add a background, so let's just say we wanted to add something like this, this will actually add a background to our video content like this. And again, you can really customize it.
size so you can make the corners more rounded and nice like that. We could even swap where the videos go. So there's a whole bunch of customization to make it look how you want it to match your brand. You can also change the layout. So this will automatically swap around depending on who's speaking. So you could do smart scenes, which will just automatically find the best layout for maximum engagement. So if I click this one, if I'm speaking in this section of the video, it's gonna to cut to me. And then if Sanji speaks, it's gonna to cut to him. If we're both speaking, it'll have both of us. You can also do split screen. This is more useful if you have multiple participants. So obviously it's just got me and Sanji, but if you had multiple people, you could have all of the ones who aren't speaking on the side here and then the main speaker here. And then we've got the regular grid like I had just before. So this is just gonna have both of us in the shot all the time. My personal favorite is definitely the smart scenes though. I think that's really cool. And then last but not least, we've got captions. And again, this is just gonna take our transcript, automatically convert it into captions. And you can stylize these pretty much any way that you want. It's got a whole bunch of presets here, as you can see. I really like these simple ones, something like this. That looks good to me. If I play this back. So as you can see, it's just automatically live transcribing this entire transcription into captions you can overlay in your video. And this is gonna be really handy for short form content, especially. And you can also fully customize this captions so you can adjust the amount of lines. So I might just go one line. You can change the animation even, which is really cool. So we could go scale, for example. You can change the color, the case, font, it's just super, super customizable. Of all the different types of caption editors that I've used, I reckon Riverside has one of the best. So let's just say we're happy with this and we're ready to export and upload to our social media. What we have to do is click the export button, select your video quality. So generally I'd go 4K. Normalize audio levels is really handy. So this will just make sure that the two different speakers or however many people you've got will all be at the same level in terms of volume. I usually leave remove background noise off because we record typically in pretty quiet environments. If you've got a lot of background noise then this might be worth using but otherwise from here you can just hit export video then you've got a couple options you can keep editing or you can go to your exports so i'm just going to go to exports and then from here what's going to happen is it's going to start exporting and depending on the length of your video and the resolution that you've chosen to export in it might take a little bit of time to just transcode so you just wait for it to finish you'll get an email when it's ready to go and then you can just download the file directly from riverside and then re-upload that to youtube or whatever social media platform you want so last but not least i just want to talk about a few extra features and tools within Riverside that I find really helpful. And really all of these are designed to streamline your process. For example, I'll often upload my entire YouTube videos that I've edited from scratch into Riverside, and then I use magic clips to turn them into short form. So for this podcast episode, for example, if I hit generate clips at this magic clip section down here, we can set the duration of the short form clips that we wanna create. So I wanna do under 30 seconds. You can set it to focus on a particular speaker or just go auto. Then you can even tell it which topics to highlight. Or you can let it pick automatically by just leaving it blank. And then just hit generate clips. And this is gonna go through the transcript using AI, find the best spots, and then cut those sections out into automatic short form clips ready to upload to Instagram, YouTube Shorts, or TikTok. So like I said, I use this personally to cut up my long form videos into short form and just saves me so much time compared to editing manually. And you can also go into the generated clips and fully customize and edit them individually. Next, we've got show notes. So right here under the episode, we've got show notes. So I'll click on that. And then just here where it says keywords, click show more. And this will give you an entire show notes summary, including takeaways. It gives you soundbite suggestions, which is really cool. It gives you the chapters that you can call and paste into your YouTube description. All of this stuff is just so helpful in terms of streamlining your upload process. And not only that, it also, I just noticed recently, will give you some social snapshots. So you can use this to upload to your social media to promote your new podcast, your new video. And these are all just automatically created. And these are actually really, really cool. I should start using these more on it. would be really helpful to promote my content. So that is definitely a really useful tool that I highly recommend making the most of. So there you go. I hope that helped you get started in Riverside. If you haven't tried Riverside, definitely use the link in the description to sign up for a free account and give it a go. If you do already use Riverside, let me know in the comments what you use it for. I'm really curious to know. And don't forget, if you do want to get a discount, make sure you use the code NICK20 to get 20% off a subscription. And if you want some more in-depth information about how to create short form content, particularly if you're using Funnel Cut Pro, then make sure you check out this video right here where I go through that entire process in depth.